Hey, it's Little Guy Coining again today, and what do we have sitting on top of the uh, workbench today? It is a old paper shredder that I resurrected out of the garage. It's heading toward the junk heap. It hasn't been used for real paper shredding for quite some time, and I'll show you why in a minute. Uh, I did try to uh, reserve it uh, for shredding up maybe some milk bottles or other materials I could possibly melt down and make filament with, but uh, it really didn't do the job on that either. So um, the problem with this guy is it will shred. Uh, let's make sure we. There, it turns on. It shreds. Oop, grabbed it there, but. What happens is I it thinks it's full after a period of time. Yeah, it'll only shred so far, thinking that ooh, that's full. It's well, it's not full. It's empty. Um, fairly empty. I uh, probably can't even see that. Yeah, it's fairly empty. And, you know, it's a, a heavy duty, heavier duty shredder. And I'll show you some uh, features of it once we get it top side. But in the past I took a look at this and uh, I determined that there is some optical sensors down here to tell when things looked like the basket was full. And I think that just too much dust has collected in those sensors over the years. So, you know. So I think we're going to take the top off here, the, the business portion, and just see what we can figure out. So give me a second to do that. And the first trick here, I've got it laid down on its back now, here's where the bin goes. The first trick here is how to remove the doggone case from from the headpiece so that we can work on the headpiece a little bit. That seems to be a trick. There's no screws on the sides, there's no screws on the top, there's no screws in the back. I don't think. Nope, no screws in the back. There are a couple of uh, holes for screws along the sides here that maybe let this top off I'm not sure but let me let me do that and see what we find inside all right so here we are I have uh, been jabbering at a uh, camera that's been dead <laughs> that battery has been dead so after removing the screws from underneath for these five locations and the one in the middle here and this one and um, where is it here it's hiding down underneath here perhaps yeah Let's see, uh, yeah, right there. It's kind of behind. Um, I took a look, and uh, these wires here for the sensors that I've now pulled out on this side, at least, that used to go through the the holes here, where the where the holes go, right there, I think. Yep, they used to go through uh, through that hole down there. I pulled that out, and I've disconnected it from the board here. Um, I've disconnected it from the connector that connected to the board back here. And uh, this thing is a little dirty. <laughs> Ick. But in any case, um, I'm thinking that, well, one of these pairs is a uh, LED and the other is a sensor. So it's probably the red and black that's the uh, LED. And these two are the sensor, the orange and the black. Come on, focus again for me. Hello. So I was thinking about popping a resistor between these two and just simulate the fact that uh, it was receiving a signal. But, um, well, I did look online and found a replacement one of these, but they want $15 plus shipping, and, well, I don't have that right now. So um, I did a little more searching, and it turns out uh, one guy recommends that if you just short these two wires together, it will work. Of course, it'll disable the full function, so it's up to you to determine when it's full. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I'm going to do it uh, on this side of the connector, so in case I ever do decide to change the harness, we, you can plug a new one right in up here. So it's interesting to see how this thing works. I mean, it's got a little circuit board there. Here's the drawer, the drawer closed switch. It fits down into this slot here and gets uh, accessed from in front uh yeah you can see the slot right here so uh, there's a little tab on the uh, drawer that pushes that shut and i'm assuming this is some sort of a starter capacitor um 
Yeah, we have to, and I'm not going to take anything any further apart here. Here's the sensors to uh, detect when a piece of paper is being put in. Fortunately, those keep uh, are still working. A little vent hole here. Um, probably could wouldn't hurt to put a little something on these gears back here. They're looking uh, well. They're still greasy. We can throw a little more grease back there. Also, we should probably lubricate this thing. And and uh, you know, some people use a uh, dedicated uh, lubricant for the um, uh, shredder lubricant. Um, some people use uh, vegetable oil. But I think I probably got a can of knitting machine oil around here someplace. I'll probably spray in there. Probably uh, do good. Uh, they say uh, online don't use WD-40. So don't do that. <laughs> so let's go ahead and add a little lube here and there. And uh, uh, cut that wire together. And we'll take a look at it again. All right. Lacking any uh, proper electrical tape, I just uh, twisted those guys, two wires together on the orange and the black. And I threw a piece of uh, shrink wrap over it. So we'll just go ahead and just heat that shrink wrap up. There we go. That'll shrink her down. There, good enough. Good enough, I say. I think that'll do. It's probably pretty hot right now. Yeah, no, it's not going to come off though, that's for sure. So let's go ahead and reassemble this thing. So I'll reconnect that connector in here and uh, we'll put the top back on. So here we are, I've got it uh, just closed up here. I don't have it screwed together. Got the power plugged in. Um, we're just gonna use a screwdriver to hold down the safety switch over here on the side. And let's go ahead and pop a piece of paper in. And the only reason it stopped is because it ran off the edge of the sensor here still working so I think we solved the problem so I think we just need to put the screws back in and it'll be good enough good enough good enough